If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to get the latest updates. Okay, so hello everyone. So just maybe I will start with a quick introduction of mine. Then maybe we'll just try to know each other first before we get started on this training, right? So, so my name is Jeet. So we are, we are, I am just trying to uh, help you guys on the collection management module. So I have been working with SAP for the last 15 years, right? And, and in most of the companies, right, we had used this collection management module. So it has evolved over the years as we move on from the ECC to the S4 HANA version. So I will be trying my level best to explain you the difference between the different versions as well and how you can configure for which scenarios and we will be making it more interactive right so that you can apply the knowledge directly when you are working right in your organization so that will be the uh, that will be the strategy for uh, the training uh, uh, so maybe so that was a brief background of myself so first of all right uh, so starting off with this collections management module right so uh, like uh, the main focus here is to ensure that whatever are those maybe the outstanding with the customers right so we are able to collect on time right so that is the primary focus so we will discuss about uh, when we go through this right we will start with the very basics like first of all uh, like you know, which are the uh, maybe the BTEs which are uh, which are uh, maybe you need to activate them this should be already there in your system if you are using the collection management but it's better to know that like for example when you are going through a system refresh or may, when maybe you are going to some system upgrades right so you need to have this checkpoints ready right in your checklist to ensure that this at least these are this activation step is not missed out right so that's the reason i also put this together in the slides just to be 100 percent sure that we have this also covered so basically what SAP does is it has already provided this uh, kind of in, in its application patches, right? Even in the S4 HANA, it has kind of pre-configured few of the modules. Like for example, for the collection management, right? You can see that uh, maybe when I go through the system, it right. So actually we are here, we are at the uh, like collections management over here. And here you can see, right? So there are these two tabs. So we will go through this. But before that, as a prerequisite, right? So here, first you need to activate this collection management, correct? Right. So here, basically, what it does is basically SAP has this business transaction events, where uh, as a, as you know, right, in the collection management, uh, first of all, you need to ensure that your all the business partners from which you are collecting, uh, like right, they they are. Uh, extended to the collection segments and also the data flows into this module of collection management and also there are subsequent functions that we will be discussing so for that right this particular component has to be active clear so it's very straightforward so basically you are having this collection management module which is activated so this would be your first step of the uh, configuration right so and uh, once you do this right it will also maybe you need to also ensure that the company codes are also activated for the collection management correct so for example uh, you can have multiple company codes which are there in your organization and maybe you will be using this collection management module for few of them or maybe for all of them uh, so that also can be done over here right so now what do we mean by that so so let's get in uh, get in touch with this one so basically here you have the company codes So here you can see that let's say for uh, like in our training system, right? We have two company codes for which the collision management module is activated. So what uh, uh, what does that mean, right? So that means basically you are transferring the data from your ER, right? Which is for example your FBL five and report where you have all your collisions uh, uh, data which comes up. So you are are transferring the data from AR into this collection management module. Okay, so how do you achieve that? So first you activate this basic settings over here, right? So like, for example, you have defined the company code for which your collections management is active, correct? Right, and then what you do is you set up the distributions rules for company code over here, okay? 
so for example here uh, previously i shown right so there were two company codes for which you had this collection management being activated correct so now this is the company code 1710 that we are looking for and here basically which type of items uh, or maybe which type of information uh, are go are flowing from you define it over here for example here right there uh, in the customer master right you will be we will be seeing later on as well so there is an option kind of uh, having a branch office or, or kind of a head office if that function is activated and you can also have some alternate payer right for example you have generated uh, just giving an example from the airlines industry let's say uh, you may be generating an invoice for the maybe the headquarters in a particular region right and then maybe the payment uh payment can be either done from the headquarters or maybe uh, to the from the ship to party right so where actually you are maybe sending the goods so they can also do the payment from right so so i'm talking about a scenario where we are in an airline scattering industry and uh, where you are trying to basically there are different kind of airports right where we are kind of delivering the food or something like that so from there, right? So either you can take the payment from the particular shipping location where you are delivering it, or it can be also paid from the head office, right? Which is, for example, maybe uh, you're in Germany, so it, let's say you are delivering to the uh, Dusseldorf Airport, and uh, maybe the headquarters are located at Frankfurt, right? So from Frankfurt, maybe you can, uh, you may be uh, kind of doing the follow-ups with them, right? So all those items, right, which are due from the head office, those will be transferred across to your collections management. And on those only, the collection specialist will follow up, right? So uh, what happens if there is like four or five company codes? Uh, yeah, so you can have more company codes over here. So uh, so the data will flow into the collection management module for all those entity okay. codes, right? So I mean, like what app, I mean, like when we activate this collection management, right? You said like uh, the BP, uh, is there a new, uh, uh, I mean, yeah. like role that's going to get created in VP. Yes, definitely. So, uh, so basically, when you activate this collection management, right? So, okay, let me just discuss that as well. Okay. So, so for example, here, right? What I'm telling is, uh, okay. So first, I talk about this FICM over here, right? So now this is activated right so once you activate this these are the company codes correct so uh, before going to the i have not gone into the org structure yet so that's the reason i didn't come into the bp part at the moment so now once you transfer this to the company code right uh, like maybe once you activate this for this company code right so you need to first inform right for which are the data correct so data will flow from where from the ar module correct now from AR module, it will flow like uh, which items gets transferred. Maybe uh, I have to I've, I've just maybe uh, talk about the concept of the head office and the branch office. Uh, and with the example which I have taken, right? Maybe the head office is at Frankfurt and it can have branch office as Dusseldorf or Frankfurt or any other airport, right? So, uh, so basically you can configure them, right? But that means these are all customer numbers. Coming back straight to the point, right, which you had, right, how do you know that this customer is a head office or this is a branch office, right? So basically, when you when we go into the customer, right, we will see that first you have the general data, correct? You have the company code data, right? And then you also have the collection segment data. Okay. I mean, the collection segment will be activated once you activate this, right? There's no collection. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yes. So right now we have not configured yet the collection segment. So we will come to that once we maybe proceed a little bit on the configuration. So with this collection segment data, right, you will have some details about the collection segment for this particular customer. Okay. So um, because I'm thinking about the impacts, right? Because like mm -hmm. when we activate this module, right, there's going to be like mm -hmm. thousands of existing customer for which we need to maintain this collection segment. Yes, right, correct. Right. And, 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 and interested about. 
uh, yeah, so the, there is a bad job which can be set up for this. So where the whenever it is extended to the company code, we will be setting up the rules as well, definitely. And uh, also there can be an extension which can be set to this collection segment. Okay. Right. So you need not do it manually, but uh, yes, this but this step is mandatory to be done. So in order, yeah, to it's a, it's a part company, of a web or activity, right? We can choose yeah, to do yeah. LSMW or whatever. Yeah. Uh, not LSMW. Basically, there are bad jobs which SAP standard okay. have already available, so you can use it. Okay, that should be fine. So so basically. Uh, once you activate those badges, what will happen? Any new customer which is created for that company code. So first, the system will check, right? So whether this particular company uh, code, uh, uh, like for example, the customer is extended to this company code or not. So now if it's extended to this company code, it again goes back here, whether the collection management module is activated for that company code or not. So then if it's activated, right, then it uh, check like which are the open items which needs to be transferred into collection management and based on that it will do that okay is it clear this part so with this right i can uh, maybe uh, we just proceed ahead with the next part like so now we know that do you want to call uh, because i think uh, previously what i understood right you are already aware of the org structure but do you want to cover that maybe initially mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. Venkat, uh, do you want to go through ARC structure? No, I'm, I'm, op I'm okay with. I mean, not going through the ARC structure. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's the reason I didn't want. I didn't also keep it in my agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay. So now the thing is, we just go directly to the maybe the the, the collections rules or the strategy. I have one so question. So yeah, sure. Do we need to activate any business functions, or since it's already appearing in the SPRO, we don't need to do it, right? Uh, yeah, so we have already done so. So that's the reason I, I have maybe put this right so that when you go for like refresh, upgrade, or kind of implementation, right, you do not miss out on this step. So please okay. have a look out for this. Got it. Okay, so okay. you must ensure uh, uh, just to be on a safer side, right? So let's have a quick look as well through this one. So here you are activating it. Okay, it, uh, it like so it's basically FDM cust 08. Okay, so here basically you have this application activated. Okay, okay, and it's kind of a business, tran it's a basically transaction driven, as you know, right? Which are the transactions where the collection management module is being hit, for example, master data, right? And then the transfer of the line items, it's a separate, it is not included in your posting event, right? For example, I think the 1030 or 1120, these are the standard business transaction event when you post a document or change a document. At that time, it is not being hit. But rather, you are having a separate kind of job or separate event where you transfer the open items to this collection management module. Okay? So this is kind of, this application had have to be activated before you start using it. So Jit, one question. So here we are talking about only the collections management, right? So, yeah. but overall on FSCM, there are other lot of sub modules, right? Yeah, the dispute management. Correct. Uh, yeah. So when we activate the FSCM as a whole or is just the activation of the collections management? Yeah, I will come to that also one okay. by one. Yeah, okay. I'm not to worry about that. So it will be, you will be like, yeah, first, first you activate this collection management, and uh, and then you have certain steps which needs to be done for the other modules as well. I see. Okay, so we but the, but yeah. but the parent module is this one, I would say, because mm -hmm. if you, if the collection management is not there, how will you, how will the well, maybe the collection specialist raise disputes against that collection against that collection mode, right? Or maybe how will you raise a promise to pay for a particular collection item in the work list? So this okay. has to be activated first, and then the subsequent steps will follow. Okay. Okay. Which so it's kind of interrelated. Okay. okay. So yeah. which will be seeing it in the further uh, sessions, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So with this, right? So with this brief background, let's move on to the, the basic rules. I think here I would need some uh, your help. So now in your system, right? Like. Uh, is it like all the open items are transferred to the collection agency or how do you like what what is the basic strategy which you use like uh, when you transfer this some of the open items to the collection agency for collection right so there has to be some kind of basic rules right which you set up 
like what is the criteria or maybe i will just maybe uh, define my question more clearly maybe, uh, so let's say you yeah, in your fi right here right in your fi er right so there are kind of maybe different types of customers right mm -hmm. so maybe some are corporate customers right corporate customers there can be some b2b business so in, you can have individual customers then you have the government uh, maybe customers as well right let's say we just talk about very simple scenario like this this three, uh, this three right so now for which are the customers you want to do this activate this collection management module so if for following up with this two or maybe all this three or uh, like what is the current strategy which you have on this see the way the way customers we have segmented right in uh, splunk or uh, jeet right we don't have it like a you know individual customer or so mm -hmm. we have basically three three models so one is that a direct customer and then we use this uh, distributor and uh, you know reseller model as well right so there are yeah. those are the two tier models and three tier models right so one is direct yeah. one is uh, with the distributor, distributor and reseller mm -hmm. yeah right? so i think those are the key segregations we use it here we don't have anything like a corporate customer or you know uh, okay got it so in this case that means either it's kind of you're selling this directly to uh, the end customer or it can be a distributor right, right. so for, uh, so uh, so in this case right so you have kind of certain agree terms and conditions for uh, the maybe for the payment right let's say in every 90 days or 30 days something like that and here it is more like based on the individual contract basis right with the direct Correct, correct. So we have all all kind of payment terms, right? Net 90, yeah. 45. There are a lot of uh, payment terms in SAP, right? It depends on the deal. Mm. And based mm. on the deal on case to case basis, the payment terms is set up. Uh, it's coming in front right. of upstream, right? Sales decides at, at what payment terms they want to sell it the customer. Mm. Okay. Now the collection management module, right? It only comes in where the items are overdue. Mm -hmm. Items are overdue. Now, let's say if you're talking that like this distribution follows a 30 days payment term, right? So then uh, uh, basically collection agencies means you will also incur some cost, right? Additional, whether it's in-sourced or outsourced, there will be some kind of headcounts who are working on this collection for mm -hmm. this particular thing, right? So definitely that means there you you need not follow for all the follow for all the items, but there will be specific items, maybe a certain order value or certain uh, for which you will be doing this follow up, correct? Right, for example, you can, it can be more than maybe a uh, thousand USD, like just a basic one, uh, just maybe uh, it, this has to be the open item value at, at minimum on mm -hmm. which you will be doing the follow up, correct? So now yeah. the thing is, yeah. No, you're basically giving a condition of what item should be allowed for collections right you're telling yeah, yeah, uh, right. limit for the dollar and then like uh, the minimum is like it should be overdue yes right so this has to be the condition okay because if if the items are not overdue you cannot have a collection agency following up for that got it right yeah. right right. Mm -hmm. right so now uh, uh, but these are only two parameters right for example if the item is overdue and the amount is greater than this what else can you have in there maybe you will also uh, see if they have uh, maybe the customer has told that i will do maybe a partial payment of this amount and but it has not been uh, kind of uh, uh, like the promise has not been made by the customer right so uh, on those cases right you will have more priorities of follow up on that correct because that means there is a likely case where it has default maybe due to some reason or other right so there can be other scenarios also there can be also like a credit score of a customer which you will be kind of applying over here whenever you are doing this collection right so all these things right so these are kind of uh, like this strat uh, this uh, not strategy I would say this rules for setting up this collection management is done under the basic setting which okay. is uh, which follows the like first you have the basic rules 
okay maybe i will just uh, you can use this one so it will be here it's clean so in this right so uh, so first you have basically first you set up your basic rules which i was telling right so based on the amount or number of due days or credit score or if you have uh, broken the promise right but each basic rule may not be applied right so what you have is uh, as a com combination of this all these basic rules right you can have collection rules right so let's say this is for the amount and overdue okay how many days maybe it has to be for well, five days overdue and the amount has to be more than thousand usd then it will go to your collection strategies okay then maybe your credit score is maybe uh, say uh, something like uh, maybe 30 or 20 something like that it is there right or maybe some ratings are there we you can also follow that or maybe you can uh, have uh, by as yeah, which i told right whether it has any promise to pay which has been broken or something like that in those cases right so so the collection rules can be based uh, can be a combination of multiple basic rules okay so i'm just drawing up the concept first and then we will see how to configure this in the system hey can i okay. can i ask you a question yeah sure so when i'm um, like let me ask when you say collection rules like if the condition the first basic rule condition is satisfied then mm -hmm. the collection rule can be like you reach out to the customer through email or through telephone or something like that that is what you call it as collection rule uh, no uh, no the uh, first, I'm just defining in which cases it will uh, we will be following up for collection. Okay. Basic rules defines just the first level, right? For example, um, let's say you are going to the office, right? So when you are going to the office, there are certain checklists, right? So for example, whether you have taken your uh, personal device, whether you have taken your ID card, and all those things, right? So maybe you have taken your kind of office devices. That is uh, rule one. You have taken your ID card and all the things. These are the rule two. And whether you have the correct transport transport selected for your uh, um, going like for this particular activity, right? So that can be a rule three. So the collection rules maybe is a combination of all these three rules. Okay. Okay. So that is that is what it is. Now, but this is a little bit different from the collection strategy, right? So collection strategy can be uh, to to determine the prioritization. So there is a method. Like, what is the method you are going to? Uh, uh, yes, right. For example, if if some customer having a is having let's say a very low credit score, you will be always following up the, them first, right? Yeah, low credit score, and if the overdue amount is there. Yeah, overdue amount is high, and there is a low credit score. Then them you will be following up first rather than those who are having a high credit score even let's say they are having the balance is much higher yeah, right? yeah so 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 those things has to be kind of those are the business decisions that has to be set up using your collection strategy okay okay so, so the rules will be assigned to a strategy right yes Eventually. right correct absolutely so now for example here right if you see uh so it's very kind of it's very systematic i would say and it's very um, well configured i would say from sap standpoint so uh, what happens is and the good thing is these are all kind of pre-configured uh, steps which sap provides so but we, we will also see how we can bring about variations in that as per the different business rules we may have right so uh, so this is what i was discussing about so i was discussing about collection strategies so it, it will have three steps First, you need to define your basic rules. Okay. So once you define your basic rules, right? So that means you know, like these are the conditions, the preconditions which are satisfied. Then you will be going to the collection rule, which can be a combination of multiple basic rules. And then you maybe strategize, like which are the collection rules which you, you must follow first, and then uh, maybe uh, which will be followed next, and all those things. Correct. And. Uh, and those customers which fulfills the rules are distributed to the work lists, right? Because I think uh, there are also certain kind of uh, uh, maybe scenarios, right? Where maybe some collection agencies, they are 
like uh, uh, like they're kind of uh, very stringent in their follow up and maybe uh, like their recovery rate is much higher right so certain customers you might be uh, willing to allocate to a, uh, to this particular collection agency and certain will be maybe to uh, some maybe in house collection agency like for which the risk is much lower right so it will be so those kinds of thing also based on the strategy that you have you can you can prepare the work lists okay now let's see uh, like what uh, sap has already provided for this basic rule so basically uh, uh, as we have told right so uh, we have activated the collections management using kind of a uh, uh, like business transaction event right so under this event right so I will maybe make it a little bit kind of technical because these are also some important things which are required to be known, right? So there uh, we have something which is known as the class, okay? So for example, in this basic rules, right? For example, when we are going, right? So SAP has pre-configured certain kind of uh, rule structures or uh, class, right? For uh, your, uh, mm, which can be used to configure the check for this basic rules right what do we mean by that so with, with this right so you can see uh, this as a part of your collection management management right it has uh, it has developed all these basic tools under one package which is this one udm strategy and under this udm strategy right it has the kind of all the basic rules which are available under this uh, like uh, basis rule IDs. Okay, so that means like you can see that the we have some names of this rule one, rule two, rule three, right? So all these uh, rules will means right. For example, there will be certain pre-checks or condition which has to be fulfilled before this kind of basic rule is met, right? So these are all configured under this UDM strategy. Why I'm telling this as a, maybe as a functional consultant, why do you need to know this? Is because like, for example, there are certain, if you need to introduce a new strategy or maybe uh, in certain cases, right? Where you uh, maybe require some additional field which needs to be called up to, for a check, right? So in those cases, you will need to inform maybe that okay so this needs to be added under this particular package and maybe the running number was 14 earlier you can have 15 as the next implementation yeah okay so yeah so sometimes uh, you would need to uh, maybe it's better to know this per thing end to end right so that's the reason it's uh, yeah, like so it's better to keep a note of this package that you are using for all this UDM basis rules. Now let's see how do we define this, right? So what was our first condition? That the items should be this uh, uh, the, will be due by more than maybe certain days, and it should be due by a certain amount, right? So let's see if I can copy over this one or not. Okay, so I can either copy or I can create a new one. But what SAP has already provided? These are the basic rule structure which sap had provided you are free to add more like but uh, but if you need to add more those can be done by basically by the this basic rule structure can be done only by the technical person because as you can see these are all certain set of rules which has been already configured in this place right so it is kind it is not a uh, i would say it, it is not kind of a, um, uh, it, it's a technical object which has to be pre-configured before we start using it. But we are free to use any of those SAP uh, basic rule structures which have been provided. Yes, I will just pause for a minute. You can let me know if you have any questions. How do you understand the existing rule? What was there inside? Yeah, so all those existing what rules. Right? Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what? Uh, so how do you understand, right? Yes, very good uh, question on this one. So what we have is whenever you create any basic rule, right? You need to reference a rule structure. Now, what does this contain? Let me just show it to you right away. So whenever you create a new basic rule, uh, as we all know, right? The SAP. Whenever we create any custom rule, it has to start with Z, right? So we just use this, and then what happens is 
as an attribute from this basic rule, there are certain things which get copied. What do we mean by the attributes is like, for example, here. So these are the filter criteria, like basically, as I have told you, right, you must transfer your open items or what on for which you want to follow up from your AR to the collection management, right? So it will only maybe if you select this basic rules over there, right? So then when the work list gets generated for the uh, maybe the collection specialist, right? It will only consider those with the amount greater than maybe 10,000 and the number of days over due will be specifying that in your- uh, yeah, Glad you specify those, the amount and number of days. That is specified in the selection parameters when, by the collection agent? Uh, no, when you generate the work list, I will show that as well to you. Okay. So okay. yeah, so when we go to that, so so here, right, as you can see, right, you specify in the basic rule, what you specify is the amount, correct? So this will be the minimum amount, and then this will be the number of days. Now you can see there are two fields for selection, right? If you want to add uh, another Z field, for example, right, then probably you have to go with your Z rules. Yeah, right. Yes, right. So for example, uh, if we do, we cannot add in anything under this basic rule structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, so basically, uh, it's uh, if you see for all this. There are already certain fields which are right, right. there. So SAP has already pre-configured all these different uh, uh, rule structure based on the needs. But in case you need some additional, right? So because every business is different, so they might need additional one. So you can configure a new rule structure okay, got it. over here. But that has to be. But in order to do that, right? You need to know like under which package and what will be the next running number. Okay. Yeah, that will be through a new class and also with pure ABAP. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, it's a pure. So it's, it will not be a separate class, I would say, but it will be uh, under this package, you will be having an, it's just like another uh, body. Okay. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just a minute. I, I can see it. So, so basically, on this note, right? So we, we were, so we were trying to create a new basic rule. So uh, as we go by the condition that we have, so first we are selecting those amount which are. So uh, our first basis is based on the amount and the number of overdue days, mm -hmm. okay? Which is that BR zero zero three. So now you will tell like SAP has already provided all the basic rules. Why do you need to create a separate one, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the reason is this one, right? So either uh, because SAP provides with this options, right? Either it can have a single field option or you can have multiple selection option. So there are different meaning of all these fields, right? So if you go into the details of here, single field means like there is, you do not provide a range. So it can be, sometimes business also needs to provide, right? If the amount is within this range to this range, then only it will be allocated to this collection specialist. If the amount goes maybe more than 5 million USD or something like that, it will directly go to this particular collection agency when the number of overdue days is more than 10 or something. Okay. So okay. there can be different strategies of collections which can be adopted. So that's the reason basically you might need, even when you are not implementing a new rule structure, you might still need to create a new basic rule. Right. For example, I can mention over here that uh, there is I will be only maintaining a single field. That means I won't mention a range for selection, but rather I will just stick to a, a single field. That means uh, the amount has to be more than 5000, right? For sending this to the collection specialist. If I do remove both this option, right? No multiple selection and uh, a single field. So that means the, um, we can we can specify any value. Either it can be a single field or it can be a range. I can also select multiple values uh, as my filter. All those things can be done. So so this kind of uh, maybe flexibility we obtain using these options. These two options. Okay. You remember whenever the um, when you when you prepare a functional specification document for an uh, 
for the technical person you you they will definitely ask right whether you want this as a parameter or a single selection field and also whether it's a radio button or checkbox something kind of something like mm -hmm. that right so it, it basically this is what we are doing so in this place we are specifying whether it's kind of a single field selection or we have kind of a uh, range of selection or we allow multiple values to be executed together or something like that right so it's kind of a uh, I, I would say it's kind of a function specification for your uh, basic rule setup okay. okay so let's see if this okay so now i have set up my basic rule let's say for the amount and number of days right so so ne next you want to also check maybe if the customer maybe uh, uh, you're trying to reach out to the customer but the customer is not responding or maybe he is disconnecting the phone something like that right so in those cases also there can be uh, like what type of contact has, has been made you can store and how many number of days he is rejecting so there can be different reasons right maybe a customer is overseas and he does not want to pick up the phone in those cases and also uh, there can be cases where he wants to avoid this follow-up notices right so all see also on those all uh, on all these cases right i think uh, you would need to define your collection strategy for that particular customer so that's the reason we have this to config over here so basically these are also uh, pre-configured rules that we are using like what type of contact has been made with the customer and after how many days the item has been overdue then you made this contact right so either you can uh, you, uh, so what you can do is uh, i can also do one more change over here let's try let's say i don't need the number of days after which so if i just want to know for that because the number of days of outstanding i'm already getting from one of the other rules so i do want to delete this rule i can also do that i can only base on the contact type and the number of overdue days i am already getting in my previous uh, rule right so i uh, so i can also maybe add or remove uh, not add i would say remove we can do add i can only do if we have uh, this under the uh, under the field sets okay is this part clear or so i think my yeah. next question to you so uh, i'm like the last two we we had like uh, the overdue amount and number of days right mm -hmm. so let's right. say i want to bring the overdue amount here also i i don't see it in the drop down so are you setting this up somewhere else so that it appears yeah, yeah that's a very good question so, th so that means your uh, like the condition can be a combination of multiple basic rules is that correct yeah then, but right? i just want to have it in, let's say what do you amount here yes so first of all in this udm structure right uh, mm -hmm. the overdue amount is not there in this one but okay. it does not limit you because what SAP does is you have already defined this basic rule ZBR0020, right? Now what I will do is then you define. So these are kind of got it, collections. Got it. Let's, uh, yeah. let's two, two, two rules. Okay. So yeah. that structure, right? The structure, can we go to SC11 and see like what are the fields that are allowed for each of those structure? Yeah, yeah. You can definitely see this. So, so this basically one, one, that's what you are saying. So yeah so this this has to be the base structure so basically sap has already provided base structure and there are certain kind of checks also right uh, for example here you can see broken promises to pay right so that means how many times the customer has maybe promised and they have failed to fulfill it and for what amount okay let's say let's say the customer has promised to pay uh, three thousand dollars three thousand two hundred dollars and he has he has paid maybe three thousand one fifty right so it can be so it is not kind of a serious violation right on those fields because he has already maybe he has missed the amount which he needs to pay or something like that uh, right on the notice but 
let's say he has uh, already kind of promised to pay 5000 usd and he has not paid that on on that date right so that means it's kind of a, a, a scenario where you need to ensure that the customer is followed up promptly so that he uh, maybe uh, at least he at the next promise he fulfills it I have follow up. Like, so, yeah, uh, yeah. So the follow up procedure will be different for those two customers. No, right? I have a question. So my question yeah. is like this structure, all are like standard SAP structure. So yeah. I would assume all these are going to have the standard fields. So uh, can you uh, first do an F4 on the field name? So what are the other oh, fields oh. you have? Oh, here, this? here. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, let me show it here this way, right? So for example, mm -hmm. if you want to add a new field, right? It will only give you this option. Yeah. So because that is what is dependent on the structure. Say yeah. I want to create a structure with the, some custom field. So that's something yeah. we can do it, right? So, uh, yeah, definitely you can do it. But for that, you again need to add a new kind of body under this particular package. So I can create a whole new package and create my own. own, own. Uh, no, not a whole new package. The so package is already provided. You just yeah. need to. Uh, so here, right? These oh, are yeah. all the yeah. Okay. These are so all which are provided. Okay. Right. So on, under this right, for example, there are so many twenty-five rules which are there. Right. Under that, you can maybe add in one more. Twenty-six or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So because like if I if I'm going to copy the twenty-five, I'm going to get only those two fields like broken promise and uh, and the and the overdue amount in the in the F4 drop down for the field name. Right. Yeah. If I copy the existing rule. So if I need new fields like that are specific to Splunk, then I should create a new uh, structure that would allow us to do the. Uh, yes, right. So for example, uh, for example, right, uh, for one of the organizations, right, maybe I will again pick up it, uh, pick up one from the airlines only. Uh, so they had a rule where they wanted to maybe also check about the kind of the sectors they're operating in. Right. For example, whether uh, it is cross continent or maybe uh, for long hauls, short hauls, medium hauls, or, or on those kinds of uh, uh, flights also, they wanted to uh, have a different strategy for follow up. Right. So, so that's the reason. So you can uh, you may might be required to add some new collection uh, rules or maybe some ba new basic rules need to be introduced. Right. So for that, right, definitely the route is you need to, uh, under your UDM package, you need to add one more uh, kind of body. Okay, it's a Check. new body. Okay. So that's, yeah. more, that, that's mostly a, a technical above, above, above has to do it. Yeah, but, 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 yeah, but the input from your side, you need to yeah. inform like which field is required and what types of values can be specified over. Yes, yes, uh, that, that I got it. That's what I got. It. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, uh, so this is about the basic rules. Any questions on the basic rules at the moment? So the basic rules is kind of uh, you are just defining the building blocks, and how you use this basic rule will be the collection rules over here. Okay. And we can have in, within one collection rule, we can have uh, more than one basic rule. Is it? Yeah, definitely. Yes, right. Okay. So now let's say we are doing this, right? So let's say Z, uh, we are, we we'll just play around, right? With this, so mm -hmm. new collection rule. Now you one. Okay. Under this, right? So you can select which are the basic rules which will apply, right? So you can also select which are the basic rule which has to be fulfilled and which Need not be. Let's say I select that we are zero zero three, and that we are twenty, right? So this has to be the prerequisite. This may not be the prerequisite, right? So first of all, the amount and the number of days must be there. But this is also kind of another condition. So it is not a must have. It is kind of. Uh, so if this condition is fulfilled, then mm, after that it is, and uh, th this it will also check for this condition. Right, so it's a, there is a difference between mandatory and uh, and an additional check, right? So that is what is specified over here. So you can see in a collection rule, you can have combination of multiple basic rules, right? So you can, it can be more. So you can have four or five basic rules which can be configured. 
So the final output, uh, Jeet, right? So once all these basic rules are met, then only it goes into the collection list, right? That, that's the uh, uh, yes, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. Okay. So so basically, uh, the objective is is not to follow up on all the items, but focus on those items and do the follow up, mm -hmm. right? So that's why we use this collection management module. So now <coughs> after this slide. So, so you're clear about these basic tools and the collection rules. So what is this basic tools? The basic rules is just like uh, the defining the kind of operators, I would say. And then you are adding up these operators one by one on the collection rules, right? So you know like which will be a, a suitable strategy, maybe uh, conditions which has to be fulfilled before you do the follow up uh, using them, right? Now, as I have uh, told, you here, right? So, so first you define the basic rules and then you define your collection rules over here. And after that, right, what you do is here. So here it is just like, just to which, which we have done. So we have defined a collection rule and we have uh, mentioned like it's a combination of which, which basic rules or something. Like hey, that. Um, sorry to uh, yeah. cut you down. I mean, like, yeah. um, so you asked that question, right? What I mean, like, now you created your own rule and you created your own basic rule and own collection uh -huh. rule. At the end of the day, I wanted to see uh, uh, your own collection strategy and how it translates. And then one uh, open item and then see like how this collection strategy that we created is coming into play. Okay. Is it doable? Uh, yeah, definitely. You we, we should be doing this. So uh, yeah, so we will be doing that definitely. Uh, and uh, what we'll do is we will, when we do the simulation on the customer open items, right? We'll just maybe book one invoice and we'll just try to uh, see a simulation of that, right? Just a minute. Yeah. Hey, Jeet. Yeah. Hi, I, sorry, I wasn't able to unmute. Now I'm able to unmute. I have a question yeah. regarding the yeah. option, regarding mm -hmm. the pre uh, we can make more than one rule prerequisite, right? Yeah, definitely. So you can have, let's do that right away. So if you want to have, let's say we define something, ZBR, here or yeah, so you can name it anything. So here we can add a new entry as well. And uh, sorry. Okay, and we can make this as well as prerequisite. So, so we can make all the three as well. The strategy would work when you have two prerequisites and one is not prerequisite. Yeah. So so that means. Uh, it works like, uh, let's say you have uh, maybe in this case, right? So you have a customer has broken promises uh, as well as it has uh, individual items which are uh, more than 5,000 and uh, 30 days overdue, right? So those in those cases, it will be followed up. And also there is uh, a, like, this is an additional condition, which is not a prerequisite uh, uh, to be met. So it is kind of an additional condition which it will be checked as a part of this collection rule whether there is a successful customer contact or not. It is kind of, uh, I would say, um, uh, uh, it is this command and this command and then. Uh, so, so this it, it would be an or right. command? Yeah, something okay. like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So in this case, right, the broker, the first two rules are met, and let's say the third rule is not met, Ajit, right? So the customer yeah. contact uh, was not successful. So mm -hmm. will it still make it to the collection rule if it's successful or not? Is that what we're saying? Yeah. So it will give you the option to check, right? For example, whether you like, so it will be not specific. So that means whether it is made or not, it will still appear in your collection work list. Nice. Okay. Okay. Then you can define further whether. Okay, so the, if the customer contact has been done via telephone or something like that, in those cases only should be a part of your work list 
you, you can define that in the filter criteria subsequently. Yeah. It is just like when we execute the FBL 5 report, right? You have put certain condition, let's say open items, clear items, all items, right? Open mm -hmm. items you have selected and with some certain assignment. Filters. Now what you're doing, once you execute the report, you also want to filter further on the document type. Mm -hmm. Just like that, you can imagine in that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, clear with this one? The collection, what is collection rule and what is uh, the basic rules? Yeah, got it. I got it. Okay. And then what we have is basically here you configure the collection strategies. So what is collection strategy? So as I as I was just going through here, right? The collection strategy is basically a combination of collection rules, right? So for example, here you can see uh, previously what we did, we had combined basic rules to define uh, the collection rules, right? So collection strategy is one uh, step higher than the collection rules where you combine your uh, the um, all the all your collection rules into one strategy what is the business usage of this is like for example uh, as i have told you right so you have maybe defined a collection strategy for those customers which are having very low credit rating right and you also have a, def a collection rule which is uh, defined for those customers which are having kind of high credit rating there can be a scenario where uh, a customer which is having a very high credit rating, but you know, they have still full, uh, like failed to fulfill their promises, right? So they they will belong to one particular risk class. And then there are certain customers, right, who are maybe with low credit rating and they have also maybe uh, just not able to meet their promises at once. So they will be having a different risk class. Right? So the chances of retrieval from either of them is uh, it's different, right? So that's the reason you need to have different collection strategy for each one of them. It can again depend on the amount, right? For some very high value contract, right? You should be maybe very particular on the time on which you are receiving the payments for. So in those cases, right, uh, I think uh, we need to have uh, different collection strategy for them and uh, yeah and so and you can see here uh, maybe not here i will just show it on the screen in sap so let's say i create z right i create this strategy In which currency you are doing this, right? And then you can have this uh, uh, defined, like which correction rules you are applying. So let's say we are applying ZBR0020. So you can see also the description. So it has actually we have not changed the description. So it is coming as there are broken promises to pay, but there there can be. Uh, it can it can be different also based on if we have maybe modified the uh, collection rule definition then it would it would have come accordingly, right? So now here you can see the prerequisite and the conditions which has to be met, right? So uh, I was talking about the select options and that no multiple selections. I have kept it blank. So that's the reason. Hey, how how did you come to this pop up screen? Can you show one more time? Yes, sure. So here you have okay. the tweet. Okay. In this place, so you can mention it. So let's say I, either you can mention that it can be a range. Five thousand to ten thousand, something like hundred thousand, right? And the day is overdue, right? Here you can see it is a single option. It is coming. Why it is coming as a single option? Because I have maintained it that way, so it has to be more than twenty days overdue. Let's see that. 
right? So we'll just validate each understanding one by one. So this is just remember we have configured Z collect and let's revisit again. Yeah. Here is a single field option, right? If I remove this, right, no multiple selection, it will still allow you to have multiple selection over there for that single field. So now let me go back again. And where is my correction strategy? Here, right? So it was Z collect, correct? Now this was this, right? Here you can see it has changed, right? Mm -hmm. Here you can see it is not a range, it is still a single field, but it allows to put multiple values, right? You got it, this one. So that means I can just yes, put this. So it is kind of uh, like very easily configurable, this one. And uh, yes, and you can also define all the prerequisites and conditions at this place. OK. Is anything, the, any okay. part which is not, yeah. Yeah, so that range is like, can you go back to the range screen, uh, Ji? Yes, sure. Set up a range, right? The number of due. So if, let's say the overdue is 20, right? Any overdue beyond 20 days, right? Uh, yeah will be shown let's say if you put 20 to 60 yeah so that yeah that's also because some companies right have the strategy like let's say those belonging to healthcare right uh -huh. so in in those cases sometimes what they do is they only follow up on items which are within that year and oh. those which are greater than one year of outstanding right so then they have a separate follow up strategy for them oh, right okay. so that's the reason what you can do is here you can provide like maybe a range over here. So if you want to put a range, I need to um, like uncheck that single field selection. Okay. Right. Right. So now it is a single field selection. Let's say we go back over here. No, no I got it. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Yeah. So same way here, level of promises, uh, maybe maybe three level of promises you can broken you know, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. Here you can also see what type of contact was done, whether it's a call or a visit or dialing notice, email or correspondence. It's quite interesting how maybe the system interact with each other so that um, like all these records are saved over here. And then when we go through the work list, right? So that time also we will see what type of information are entered over there. So it will be, it will be it's quite interesting how, like what is the level of information which can be stored in the system. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions till now? So here you can see, I think there is, there should be a question from your side is over here. You can see here you have already defined the overdue periods, right? And here also you have defined the overdue periods. What is the meaning of each one of them? Correct? So this is basically the fil the first filter criteria for your execution, and this is the second, right? So what I mean by that is, let's say we go into FBL five. So basic question, uh, Jeet, sorry. Uh, so yeah. we can you go back to the screen? Yeah, sure. So here you define the overdue and uh, things uh, like that, right? So, so system automatically. So, so here what happens, right? So we we create an invoice and automatically mm -hmm. based on the payment terms there is an invoice due date, right? Mm -hmm. So, when we say let's say the invoice due date is July 11th, right? Mm -hmm. uh, from today plus 30 days is what uh, the overdue period here means. So. How 
system the so system automatically looks at that through the invoice zero over due means system. like there is a you remember in fbl5 when you have certain indicators uh -huh. so in fbl5 when let's say we talk about maybe we just take any open item okay yeah so these are the open items right so here right so you can see all these items are overdue so now if i just wanted to check right let's say we find the net due date okay so you can see it was due on this dates right so from this date it is running overdue okay so it, it looks at this feed net due date standard okay yes right yeah Hey, in FICA, the, the report is a different report, but it works in the same way. Uh, yes, oh. right. I see. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, because I think in FICA, you have mostly, these are not kind of fixed customer. It is a kind of contract accounts, right? So that's the reason I think there is a different, yeah. different, right? Yeah. Okay. But the logics are same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you were there, so. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is basically uh, like the the first level of a config that we have gone through. So today our uh, thing that we were we had planned to cover, we have actually finished that. So we we actually plan to cover this basic rules today over here. So the just to sum it up, right? So in the basic rules, uh, uh, so first uh, we have we know right how to activate the collection management. That was our first thing that we have come to know. And then for which company codes your collection management is active. Now when you maybe define the I line items which are transferred to collection management. So for that you had to go through three process. First, you define the basic rules, right? And then you define the collection rule over here. And at the end, you uh, kind of set up your collection strategy. Okay. So this will be kind of a three step uh, process, I would say, to define your collection strategy. So in the tomorrow's class, what we can do is we can see a simulation of uh, kind of how I will create some new open items as well, and we'll just maybe uh, see how those items get transferred as per the different collection strategies. And then maybe on that, we will develop some work list and uh, work on the different uh, things. So, so just to go back to our... Uh, yeah, I, I have a question. So yeah. can you pull that strategy screen? Yes, sure. Um, in the SAP, yeah. So here you are still defining only the condition, right? You are not telling what is the strategy for this collection should be, who who should be collecting this, or like how they should collect. That is not being. Uh, yeah, not yeah. So that that will be a part of your work list generation. So it, it again depends, right? So for example, let's mm -hmm. say uh, you are in an organization where uh, which is working with three collection agencies, right? Let's say it's. Uh, uh, Thompson routers, maybe some DNB or something, some collection, three collection agencies they are working with, right? And then they are, there are different rules for allocating to them, right? So you set up the rules over here, and then when you generate the work list, right? So there you will see, there it, there it will prompt, or you will have an option as well to determine the correct uh, maybe agencies to which you want to outsource. So you don't do it in the strategy, and not not in the strategy yet, yeah. Okay, so you're saying it's in a different place. Yeah, it's in the general work, generate work list, that option there. Okay. Like if you want it to generate over here, right? For example, it will automatically propose the collection specialist at this moment. You can do again via the basic rules setup, right? So if you want, let's say a field for the collection agency, which is there, and then you add in that under the collection rules, and then you can add it here as well. It depends how you want to process. Yeah, again, it's a prerequisite, right? It's yeah, a, yeah. If I see 10 open items in an account, I want this 10 mm -hmm. open items to go to two different persons based yeah. on my view. So yeah. that, that you are not, you are saying that that is not in the configuration. That is, in the that is, that is not, uh, I have not shown this as a part of this configuration. So I will do that as a part of my general work list. But having, having said that, right, it doesn't prevent you to set up that as a config as well. So you can do that as well under your basic rule setup, adding a new field for the collection agency, right? Maybe I'm not sure. I'm like, you need to, uh, 
I'm not sure how you do that because like those are two different things. So because like uh, all this time we are def- uh, we are defending only the prerequisite. In the yes, rule right. also we are defending only the prerequisite. We are not yes, telling right. what if this. Pre- Hello. I think we lost you. Yeah. No worries. We'll just wait for him. Hey, uh, I'm like, are you not able to hear me? When no. you... Yeah, no, now it's better. No, no, what I'm saying is like all this uh, a config, you are only defining the prerequisite, right? You are not yes, telling right. what is the end end should be. Like, so that- Yeah, because be... the thing is, uh, yeah, so, the, uh, so you need to understand. So this is kind of the checks that are done. And if you want to assign the work that is done through well, the generation of the work list and assign to, assign to the collection and groups. So mm-hmm. that is a separate step because that is the purpose of having a collection manager, right? The collection manager is responsible for routing the items to the correct collection specialist, right? So you are saying like daily morning, the collection manager should come and uh, route it. Yeah. To the yeah. So ba- basically every day morning, right? So there will be a work list which will be generated and the collection manager's, manager's duty is to ensure that uh, the work list is allocated to the correct person. Either then, then, also- uh, like, then there is no... Uh, um, I'm like no artificial intelligence here, right? So I'm I'm like I I want see I know a person who is going to work on this customer and who will be responsible for this collection, uh, which is mm-hmm. over for more than ten days and over, and then like there's so, so on so amount range. Why mm-hmm. why can't I automatically tell the system to uh, assign that open item to a collection agent rather than a collection manager should come and do that part? Yeah, so we can we can also discuss how you can achieve that as well, right? So it is not something which is not achievable. So there is already like so this is the role of a collection manager which I was telling. So if you want to automate that particular role, like for example, in this case, there won't be any manual interaction, but rather it will be a system based rule where let's say these conditions are met, then it will be directly allocating to this. I mean, manager. that is what we need. I mean, we don't want this thing where a, a human should come and say this should go to person X and this should go to person Y. It should yeah, be fully okay. systematic. We define the condition and we tell this is the uh, end, end output that it should, uh, like if these conditions are adhered, it should go to this person, then it should follow that. Okay. Okay, noted. Yeah, so I think I will also go through that particular bit, how you can achieve that, not to worry. Okay. About. Yeah, yeah, that will be interesting. Yeah, that is that will be interesting to yeah. see how it works. Okay, that's cool. So that's interesting uh, because uh, Ted, Ted's team today, what they do is you're right. So they go and figure out this list manually, right? Then they assign all these list collection lists to some uh, some collection specialists. Right? Yeah, we don't want that, right? Correct, we are doing correct. the same thing again. Yeah, that's all manual today. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I think I think that's a good observation that you have. So maybe what we will also request to make it more kind of uh, productive for both of us, right? So these are some of the scenarios which you can list out uh, at the end of each session, right? And then maybe make a note of this so that we know at least if if like uh, I'm sure we are not able to implement that because it's kind of a test system. But at least you will know know the path through which we can maybe uh, uh, kind of achieve this objective, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think if you can yeah. just focus more, uh, just to just wanted to bring it out, right? So once these work lists all will be shown, shown will be shown somewhere in the Fury app or something, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see, you know, if there is more a dashboard kind of a view. I think that's yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. So first of all, my config I wanted to do through this because here yeah. I can see more options. That uh, so basically, if you if I do it by the Fury tiles, right? So then there will be certain options that you will be missing out. Which yeah. I don't want. Okay, makes sense. We just wanted a more interesting app as well. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And then basically, when you generate the work list, you will be seeing how many collections has been done by this particular specialist. You will get get a graphical view also of all those right. things, mm-hmm. all the dashboards. So that's uh, yeah, that that should be there. So it should not be. Okay. And other thing is like whatever collection strategy we are creating, I would like to see some end to end. So uh, how? Yeah, that... yeah. So I need to create some open items for that. So because yes, so that yeah. simulate that for you. So that's the reason I could not. But the our, but uh, today's objective that we had for the today's training we have already completed. So basically we know the underlying config of, about the basic rule setup and the collection strategies. In the next session, maybe we'll just to see how this gets allocated from AR into this CM module, right? Okay. 
Okay. I think what we mean by end to end is yeah, you we can set up one rule uh, either mm -hmm. from scratch or copying, and how it actually works in practice, maybe with some examples. And I know you yeah. already mentioned that you need to have some open items created for that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's right, I believe. So we will be doing and that. You will also yeah. be focusing on what what data needs to be maintained in the master data business partner, right? Uh, yeah, you need that, right? Or or you do not? Yes, we, are, we, I, we just wanted to understand what all need to be done in the master uh, data. Okay, sure. So uh, yeah, so uh, you we already have the org structure set up. So what I will do is maybe I will also show it to you on the master setup, right? Maybe what are the fields which needs to be maintained so that the data flows. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, anything else you have for me for today, or else we just maybe meet up tomorrow so we uh, go through the next part of the simulation. Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below, and we will reply to them at the earliest.